Hello, I'd like to introduce you to Environmental Science 1401. This class is for uh, kind of what we call mixed majors, and that means if you're going into environmental science as a career, this will count towards as introductory credit, and this does count as science lab credit for those of you that are not going into the sciences. Um, a little about me, um, I go by Dr. S, because nobody can pronounce that hideous last name I inherited from my father. Uh, my office is HSB202V in the um, Health Sciences Building. And my phone number, my office phone is um, uh, right there. And what happens if I'm not around my office, that rolls over to a voicemail, which I can check um, on my email. Um, also, we have a fax number, and there's very little probability we'll be using a fax. And half the time, most of us don't know how to use a fax machine. Probably the best way to get a hold of me is through the um, my email, and you can either email me stuff through the um, regular email account. Uh, but a lot of times, uh, particularly for sending attachments from a personal email account, it goes to spam, and I don't always see it. The best thing to do is to use the... Um, D2L as a way of communicating with me, because that's how I'm going to communicate with you uh, throughout the semester, is either through my Lone Star, but primarily through the D2L. So be aware of any announcements, and if you reply to D2L, I, I will get that message, because those don't usually go to spam. Um, this is what our course page is going to look like, and most important to you, because this online stuff can be rather complicated. I know, and um, D2L is not um, the, the simplest thing to use, but this is our home page. So when you click, when you enter the class, you'll see my home. And if you ever get lost in the website, just go back there and it gives you a way to start all over again. Two important features are going to be here and right here in this section. So you'll see all your assignments listed here. And this is pretty much what our introductory page is going to look like under the table of contents. You'll have the syllabus posted. Um, you'll see this area called Habitable Planets, which can contain uh, materials you need throughout the semester. I'm going to have a version of the PowerPoints for you to use, particularly during testing, uh, testing to supplement the book. And as you, when we scroll down, you'll see um, the different lecture assignments that will be ordered in the most recent assignment on top. And then below that will be other resources. So um, now, where you'll be looking for your content is right here. So this window, the content window, leads you to where all our assignments are going to be. And you'll see a bar just like this with uh, the different assignments listed. Um, for grades, I'm likely not going to be uh, posting grades on D2L. I used my Lone Star to do that because I have some issues with the D2L grading, but I'll always keep grades on the spreadsheet so that if you need your grades, just please send me an email and I can give you a class average. With every test, I will give you your approximate letter grade for that point of the semester. The other important area is communication. This is where you will email me and your emails will uh, show up. And um, Again, I won't be probably posting assessments and under the resource sections, there'll be some stuff uh, listed there too every now and then, like class announcements. Um, for the course description, um, we go by what's called a Texas Higher Education Coordinator Board description of class. And basically, this is not going to be a total science class. We're going to be covering uh, a lot of issues that have to do with ethics economics, sociology, psychology, you name it, because all of these you'll find out in the first uh, lecture week are, are all integral parts of environmental science. So this is going to apply to those of you going into many disciplines, because uh, uh, all our discipline areas affect or are affected by um, how we approach the environmental sciences. So this is all in your syllabus here, the course description. And um, this course does count as a science course, not particularly for science majors, but for those of you going into different careers, and again, those of you going into environmental science as a field. As far as your evaluation goes, um, I do weigh the evaluation, the, your, your test scores. And that means as I look at the highest test score and use that to calculate the average for the exam. So if we all want to have a nice semester, you know, we all score low, you know, very low, and that kind of brings up the average. But pretty much um, I've been consistent um, 
throughout the years as you know what the average is going to be so usually it comes out of traditional in the 70s overall average is a c 80s is a b 90s is an a um, except under very you know exceptional situations we've had classes that did higher or lower on their averages so um when we look at this from a total percentage of i mean number of points and, and just use this as kind of like a reference again i will provide you with a great average upon your request um so when we look at this in perspective uh, 300 points will be from three take-home lecture exams and these will be you'll take these you know at home and i'll show you you know how to use the answer sheet for these um, 200 points would be from take-home assignments and you'll be getting these at least once a week sometimes two a week depending on the nature of the assignment these will be anything from at-home labs to um, case studies to um, uh, just small research projects, but you know, nothing big, but these will reinforce the content. You know, I'm, I don't like busy work. So these are things that I can just get some written work out of you. It's part of our class requirement is to look at critical thinking and also not so much your English writing skills, but your writing skills as far as communicating um, sometimes technical and sometimes just, you know, um, uh, thoughtful information. We do have um, some video assignments that you'll be doing, short videos you'll be making using some software called Flipgrid, which runs on any system, including your phones. So if you have a phone, I would download the Flipgrid app. It's free. I paid for the website uh, up front so that you have no cost to it. And basically it allows you uh, to, to make uh, up to a five minute short video answering questions about a topic because part of our requirements for this course too is communication and the neat thing about flipgrid is you can do a video reply to other students and i'm going to post this for all my online sections so we can see people from other sections and how they reply so this is going to be worth a test grade in itself and please don't miss these assignments these are very important assignments for me that are part of you know not just your grade but also part of me getting to see um you know your reasoning skills particularly uh, and your communication skills the other thing we're going to have is what's called the annenberg habitable planet series and this is a neat thing produced by a group uh, a grant through a group called annenberg and they have something set up very similar to our book but it has a lot of videos and some questions that go along with them and a lot of neat um, up-to-date resources that take the, our, our book and make it somewhat a little more interesting by applying this concepts in the book to everyday things you know that we encounter in our lives so i'm going to ask you at least every other week um, to watch one of these and fill in a short sheet that answers um, a series of questions that you get from the annenberg not from the web or not from your textbook but just from the annenberg website and when you go to it you'll see um, it's pretty self-explanatory because i'll give you direct links to each chapter that we go across it'll be about 10 of these that we'll complete um, then we have 200 points from a comprehensive final exam and why are we comprehensive it's just the nature of the course because this course is a core course that means it counts towards your associate's degree that's transferable to a four-year degree and um and what they need from me every year is a measurement of how you've passed what are called certain student learning outcomes and that i do from the final the final is a it's not a multiple choice it's um you select um two of the three essays and write a heck of a lot of a detail about it because think about this as being you know basically a hundred point essay and so there'll be bullet point type questions for you to answer each bullet point in a paragraph and don't freak out about this now um, you, you'll the, the questions will be from materials we covered on the exams which is why it's important to take the exam seriously and you know use your own answers for them because you'll be doing this um, final that you'll be putting in your own uh, words and using you know uh, information from the um, exam itself and also from uh, your class uh, lectures and the some of the Annenberg content so the so the final is pretty open-ended but I think it's a great way for me to again see how you've learned the information and for me to um, you know literally record it for state reporting and then normally I don't give extra credit 
but um, I'm very strong into community service and service learning, and I'm willing to give a test point, you know, a test worth of credit. That means 100 points, and depending on how you do this community service, usually we give, um, you know, 100, 90, 80, 70, depending on participation. But we have many things that come up through the year that require us volunteering um, either on campus or in the community around here. So it's not gonna to be too far away. And we have a lot of things that go on throughout the semester. If you're an education major, um, I have a lot of good things for you because I'm always doing stuff with the K-12 schools on environmental programs. And we work with Precinct uh, 4 on doing programs and, uh, and other things. So. I'll let you know ahead of time when a community service opportunity comes up. And if there's any community service that you want to do that's related to environmental science, let me know and I can give you credit for that too once I look over uh, what the project is. So please, this is a great way to get involved. And, and I do this a lot. I volunteer a lot, uh, you know, not just locally, but also even internationally. I've had projects in Philippines, Bangladesh, uh, country of Colombia, and, and uh, Honduras. I mean, just to name a few of things that I do on my own. And that means I raise my own money to travel and do whatever. But I believe that's an important part of environmental science is how do we help people with our knowledge? Because a lot of environmental science, yes, is helping nature. But we have to understand in this class that people are part of nature. We're not an outsider. So that means we have to look at our interactions with nature and also help other people learn that too. So what does the Annabelle Habitable, Annenberg Habitable Planet series look like? Um, don't go by this order. We're not going to go in this order because our book doesn't follow. So yes, um, we are going to look at the first one first. And this I'll assign the first week um, of, uh, of our official uh, start of lecture time. And then, then I'm going to pick some of these out of order, depending on the order of the chapters in your book. So this pretty much reflects the content of your book. And this end one, we're not going to do, because this is just kind of like if you took this course as a course in itself, and this would be the equivalent of a final project. But we're not going to do that. But we are going to uh, look at the videos from this and then answer, again, two sets of questions. One set are factual, that I really need to see your answers, and the other is going to be kind of open-ended essays for you to make comments about um, you know, what you saw in the videos. So those would be more of a short essay format. But again, we'll be seeing all of these as we go throughout the semester. These are all major topics that are involved in environmental science. The books. There are three editions of the modern book floating around right now, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. And um, I, the, the 12th is so out of date, it's kind of ridiculous now. If you have a copy of that, you can pretty much get along with it and with the PowerPoints, but I don't really want any older editions because it's missing a lot of information. And you can see between the difference between the 13th and the 14th, um, there's a change in the chapters. And basically what they did was, you know, split up one chapter, combine another, but the 14th has 20 chapters and the 13th has uh, 19, just like the 12th edition. Uh, but pretty much um, I'm going to tell you with each lecture video, because that's how I'm going to be communicating with you primarily, is I'll list off what chapters that covers in each edition. So, but pretty much they'll stay on target until we get about, it um, uh, looks like the uh, uh, 13th week of the semester, it starts changing a little. Um, uh, um, so again, this is the difference between the editions. And again, I'll bring that out as the semester goes along. So what's the online format going to be like? Because a lot of us are a little hesitant about online. When I first started teaching uh, this class online, I was a little skeptical too. But I've been teaching online graduate courses for a while. And you know, now for a year, uh, on, you know, uh, this course. So I will record some lectures. And these are going to be abbreviated lectures based on your PowerPoints. So this way you can at least use the content of the book to study from this and it will go along with the book. Every now and then I'm going to use what are called Bozeman science videos. Uh, uh, the guy that developed these um, uh, did these for his students, both um, high school advanced placement and, and two-year college, just like ours. And he made some videos of various topics 
in science that I think are great at supplementing the course. And he takes a little different approach than me in the video. So I'll assign these occasionally when I think his video does a good job supplementing mine or even in some cases replacing mine because he did a much better job. So, uh, so um, these will be available too, plus some other videos I get from other resources uh, uh, like government websites and commercial websites that have some detailed aspects of the content of the chapter. Like it might show, we have a couple of videos that show how a sewage treatment work, plant works, which I can't show you. So we have a tour of a sewage treatment plant, like a tour of a waste facilities and recycling and all sorts of stuff that would supplement the lecture. Um, we will have, again, assignments based on these videos in a lot of cases. So the video is not just to watch. It's also to answer questions either in a case study or on a brief, uh, um, you know, what I would call like a survey, not quite a quiz, but just something to fill in to answer questions related to the video. Again, the Habitable Planet videos will have their own quizzes that go along with it. And this will be in D2L under the Habitable Planet. You'll see your series of Word docs that you open up and you'll write your answers directly on the Word doc. And then we have the Flipgrid chat board. I'm not gonna use the D2L chat board because it's a pain in the rear to use. And a lot of times, stuff doesn't get posted properly if you don't submit it properly and if I don't open it up properly. So I'll post um, a link in your emails and on the D2L uh, uh, assignment window for chat boards. And these you can do again from your phone, from a computer. It doesn't care where you do it. And these are really kind of neat. And I found that this is a great way for us to see each other and interact with each other in class. Because with these online classes, we don't get to see other students in the class. And this way we can. OK, and, and particularly this is useful when we start doing service. There are people that might want to carpool together for the service or work together on a project. And again, your three take home exams and final, you know, will be again at home. So you will fill these in on a Word doc. And again, I'll show you uh, pretty much how that goes. So whenever I post a test, I'll set up on your calendar the due date for the test. And there will be a period I will lock you out. So if you think you're not going to get a test done on the, two, the due date, please let me know. Because there is a period of time where I'm going to have to lock you out of that exam. And unfortunately, you're going to have to take the hit of a zero. Because I don't drop exams because I need to test the content of all of that. Since we are a core class, we have to meet certain content guidelines. And particularly those of you going into environmental science, you have to show me confidence on that to say that you've taken a class. So what I did was I set up the answer sheet from 1 to 60. Um, you won't get 60 questions all the time, but it means I can ask up to that many depending on the mood when I write the exam. So we can get anywhere from uh, 45 uh, to 60 questions. So don't be surprised if you stop at 50 and say, oh my gosh, I don't have the last page of the attachment. No, I will make sure that that's there. But please don't fill out your answers on the test sheet. Use the test answer sheet. And then, you know, you could write on this and scan it and send to me, or just in the Word doc, you can put your answers here and just go straight down. And this makes, this sheet makes it easier for me to grade. Now, also, when you submit these, try not to change the formatting too much, because you know, I do have a template that I put this on to do your grades. Um, um, and again, you can submit these to me by email, preferably D2L, because this way I know I have it. And I forward my D2L to my regular email, but the D2L email always stays in a certain file, so I know I won't lose this if I don't see it in my regular email. But please try not to submit these to my regular email account using your home email. Because a lot of time it goes to the spam and I don't always see it. Because sometimes we'll end up with 100 spam in there. And I don't know your home email addresses. So this is pretty much going to be a straightforward thing when we look at taking an exam. And I'll give you, uh, again, a firm due date on that. And then you're going to have to email me if you don't reach that firm due date. So please, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I do have instruction manuals on D2L. So if you run into problems accessing the course, please let me know. But um, pretty much, you know, when we open the class, 
you know, log on to the home page, go to the content page, and I will send you an email when the, when content appears uh, uh, on the D2L website. So I'm looking forward to a fun semester. Um, we've had fun with this online course, and particularly as you know, we progress in the course and get to the point where we can do some activities where we meet at a place. Because again, I'm very involved in the community, and I'm very involved in going to policy meetings. And I will let you know the dates of that if you ever want to take a trip to the Kirby area of Houston or to Galveston, uh, where I uh, go a lot for meetings. So you can actually see how a policy meeting works, and I can introduce you as you know a student interested in at least in learning about policy. And at these meetings, guys, we can meet people like the governor of Texas. Uh, mayors from the area and city officials and all sorts of um, incredible people that you can have an influence on talking to directly. So let's have a good semester. And again, uh, look for my first email about our first assignment. Thank you.